Thank you, Larry. Good morning again. Um, as both a hockey, big hockey fan and also a, uh, an employment lawyer, there was a scandal uh, in, in the hockey world over the last six months where the fallout's still ongoing that really caught my attention. Um, and it involved a franchise worth $1.4 billion and they so thoroughly botched a response to a sexual harassment complaint that they've been taking on a significant amount of terrible publicity. Um, and we felt that this was really an illustration about what, based on how, how thoroughly the Blackhawks failed, how it's an illustration of, of how to properly investigate and correct workplace discrimination and harassment. Next slide, please. So um, what happened was in May of 2010, a video coach and a top prospect who was 19 years old for the Chicago Blackhawks had sexual contact at, a, at the video coach's apartment. Um, what happened is in dispute. Um, the video coach claimed it was consensual, although obviously this was a supervisory employee um, off hours with someone who essentially reported to him so it had some quid pro quo elements to the sexual contact. Um, the top prospect claimed it was a forcible assault, that there was no consent, that it was against his will, and, and that it was in effect a sexual assault. Um, within days of the incident, the top prospect came forward. He did not make it clear that he was alleging a sexual assault, but that something inappropriate had, had, had occurred and that he was uncomfortable with what happened. Um, Basically, all, the entire brain trust of the organization came together to meet how to discuss it. Uh, that included the president, the general manager, the coach, as well as several other high high ops people um, to discuss the allegations. It was in the midst of the Chicago Blackhawks playoff run, and they decided we'll table uh, handling it until after the playoffs end. Uh, that year, they won the Stanley Cup, so the playoffs lasted for a while. Next slide, please. After the playoffs ended, uh, human resources met with the video coach said well you can either resign now uh, well we won't say anything about this incident or you can stay pending a, an investigation and if we find that you, you you know did something inappropriate violated our practices then we will uh, terminate you um, so the video coach ele elected to resign um, but he was essentially treated as um, uh, an employee leaving amicably so he was attending all of their um, postseason functions and again, making the, uh, the victim uncomfortable, feel ostracized and marginalized. And that continued into the next year. Um, the prospect reported that he was mocked and ridiculed by his teammates for his relationship with the video coach. And the prospect who was a first round draft pick, number 11 overall, and was 19 at the time with a very promising career, ended up washing out of the organization and playing in Europe. Next slide, please. So, as any employment lawyer will know, this was a ticking time bomb. You had a predatory video coach um, and an organization that was an, unable or unwilling to address it. Um, several years later, the video coach was arrested and convicted for indecent sexual assault on a minor uh, in Michigan. And this was a hockey player on a high school team. Uh, the video coach had leveraged his, his time in the NHL to get jobs at colleges and high schools. and. As more information comes out, it turns out he was predatory with uh, young men and young boys. Um, the family of the victim filed suit against the Blackhawks in 2021. Um, and the top prospect who had um, who had come forward in May of, of 2010, uh, he also filed suit in 2021 after he learned about the video coach's arrest and conviction. Black Hawks organization commission an independent investigation. The independent investigation was very critical of the Black Hawks organization and it, the, in, uh, the investigation report was released publicly. Next slide, please. The fallout was clear and swift um, from the Black Hawks failure to investigate and remedy the sexual harassment. Um, on top of terrible publicity, there was a predatory individual who was allowed to continue to work with hockey teams, particularly college and high school hockey teams with younger boys. Um, a top prospect did not realize his potential for the organization. So this was a promising young employee who could have given years of service to the employer uh, and he was not able to do so. The NHL fined the organization $2 million. 
the Blackhawks settled the lawsuits against them for significant money, even though they likely had very strong defenses on statute of limitations grounds because the incidents had occurred more upwards of 10 years earlier. Uh, and the current GM of the Blackhawks and the coach of the Florida Panthers, who was the coach of the Blackhawks at the time, both resigned to their roles and they're essentially personas non grata in the NHL at this point. Next slide, please. So the question is, how do you not be the Blackhawks? Um, and that requires once a report of harassment or discrimination is brought to your attention, it should be investigated promptly and thoroughly. And the investigation should be done in a manner that's designed to uncover the truth rather than protect the company. And I think employers when conducting investigations should understand that sweeping things under the rug is not protecting the company. If you have an employee in your midst who's engaged in discrimination or harassment, it's not protecting the company to um, treat that employee with kid gloves or act like what happened didn't happen. The best thing is to address it and remedy it as soon as possible. Otherwise, it's probably going to happen again. The vi this video coach was a predator and was likely to um, engage in some similar misconduct in the future. Um, so this is the type of thing that employers need to be aware of. The best way to protect the company is to uncover the truth and then take steps to correct it. So while the investigation is ongoing, the alleged perpetrator should be separated from the alleged victim. Um, and confidentiality for, during the investigation should be maintained to the greatest extent possible. The key words to the greatest extent possible. Confidentiality is not something that can be guaranteed, um, but it should be the, the best practice is to keep it as confidential as possible. Um, documentation during the course of the investigation, notes of witness interviews, notes of action plans, um, reports, written warnings into employee files, personnel files, um, once corrective action is taken. If there are sticky situations about what corrective action is appropriate under the circumstances, then you should consult with employment counsel about that. And then finally, you should be sure not to retaliate against the victim, even regardless of whether or not the victim has alleged something that's actually actionable harassment or discrimination. That employee has engaged in protected conduct and cannot be subjected to retaliation for that protected conduct. So thank you very much. And I